I did put this all in a very large font, but I still need my glasses. <laughs> well, everybody, that was... We all have them. I know, really, thank you, Doug. That was Doug Meehan, and he's our celebrity MC for this evening. Doug was honored by Boston Magazine as one of Boston's the fabulous 40 newscasters. Patty, that one was when I was under 50, though. Okay, but, 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 I'm just going to go with this big go-back for you. He began his career as an anchor and reporter at Cape 11 News in South Yarmouth, Mass, and then traveled around the country broadcasting in Providence, Rhode Island, Dallas and Austin, Texas, and Phoenix, Arizona. Back home in Boston, some of you may remember the Doug Meehan Show on Boston's WTKK 96.9 FM, and he was a contributor on the Wall Street Journal radio network in New York. In 2015, he came to WCBB, where he is now the co-anchor of Channel 5's weekend morning newscast. He co-anchors, yes, on the morning work. He co-anchors with Rondella Richardson for the Saturday morning, 5 to 7 a.m. and 8 to 9 a.m. I'm not watching. <laughs> and Sunday morning, still not watching, 5 to 7 a.m., 8 to 9 a.m., and maybe the 10 to 11 a.m. He also contributes to the weekday eye-opening newscast as a general assignment reporter. Ladies and gentlemen, please, another warm welcome for a young man. Thank you. I too thank you for being here tonight. I know it was a miserable night, and I appreciate you all coming out and supporting us here. I am Patty Laden, and I am the new president and chair of the Charity Group. But I'd like to take a moment and introduce our past president and chair and thank her for all the work she's put into the last two years. And more importantly, for agreeing to stay on as vice chair. Nancy got to see you. Right, Nancy. We're also losing a friend of the guild. Actually, he's the executive director. At the end of the year, he's, he's retiring. Uh, Michael Molino, where are you seeing tonight? Michael? Oh, yeah, you see Michael, thank you for all you have done, and we wish you the best in your time. <laughs> oh, yeah, oh, absolutely, we know where you live. Well, tonight wouldn't be possible without the work of many hands. Coming up with the concept for the night, the date, the time, the place, the invites, the stuffing of envelopes, the sponsors, the flowers, the, well, you get the picture. And the room looks beautiful, by the way, doesn't it? It does. Beautiful. In talking to many of you tonight, you all had great memories of the Canoe Club, and you remember it was the 70s and the 80s, the proms, the dances, and hasn't, hasn't the family done a great job with this? It just looks absolutely beautiful. on in both the silence auctions, which are against the wall, and the live auctions, which we'll get to later, the restaurants, Restaurant Alley, and the wine pool. Uh, clearly, we know what was popular, the wine, the wine pool, everyone's just about gone. <laughs> we know this crowd. And that couldn't have been done without a committee. And I would like my committee to stand up and take a bow. Barbara Ginelli was the gala chair. Mike's here with the Napoleon family over here. Nick Napoleon is on the Bellas and Dan Cabins. 
Sonic Beats. I also want to give much gratitude to our gala sponsors. They are listed in your program, but they deserve some recognition here. Our platinum sponsors, thank you, Pam. Mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> our platinum sponsors are Good Samaritan Medical Center and Stewart Healthcare. Our gold sponsors are Stephen Laurie Frederick, Mutual Bank, and Pro and Family Foundation. Our silver sponsors, Brophy and Phillips, Present Credit Union, the DeMarco Charitable Foundation, Eastern Bank Travel Charitable Foundation, Genesis Wealth Management, McCauley Oil and Energy, Pediatric Associates of Brockton, Rockland Trust Charitable Foundation, and the Turner Brothers. Our bronze sponsors, Attorney James Burke and Brenda Smith Burke, Representative Claire Cronin, our honoree, and J.S. NATO Company, Incorporated. Open. Now, I want to give a high five. Put in the high five for us and help us out in our newest campaign. Many of you who follow us on Instagram at the Charity Guild or on Facebook, and I hope after tonight you'll all follow us, have seen our high five campaign where we asked you to post a picture of yourself giving the high five and only donating only five dollars to the Guild. September was Hunger Awareness Month. Yes, this is a month for hunger, so hunger awareness. Even though we, and all of you, with your help, are aware of it 12 months a year. But that's what we did this campaign in, con in conjunction with. We got a little late start with it. But in two weeks, what did we raise, Laura Streets? We raised $1,700. Thank you. our newest members. And it's something we intend to do the whole month of September next year, so please follow us and be a part of it. It was fun. You know, since 1971, when the Guild was first organized, thousands of people, the poor, the marginalized, and the vulnerable, have come to our door. They have counted on the volunteers and the staff to help them with clothing, with food, and with a kind word of encouragement. As a social I'm trying to do it without my can. As a social service agency, we are committed to helping children and families of all faiths and backgrounds to help with basic needs and the support necessary to close the gap between absolute poverty and the ever rising cost of living. We are guided by the basic decent principle to help our neighbor in need of compassion, dignity, and sometimes just a good meal. Now in the midst of all the noise outside this room tonight, the tumultuous times that we're in, please relax and be joyful about the goodwill and generosity you have shown by being here tonight. Enjoy the meal, and we'll be back later. Thank you. The Brockton Neighborhood Health Center, the Brockton Visiting Nurse Association, Family and Community Resources, you go. My Brother's Keeper, the Prone Foundation up there, just checking in, the Sons of Italy in Brockton, Todd Penny. Signature Healthcare is representative, represented, and Stonehill College. We have selectmen here from the town of Easton. Craig Barger, by the way, sends his regrets. He was supposed to be here, Claire, but he couldn't at the last minute. Uh, we do have the chair of the Easton selectmen, Dottie Fulginetti, right here. And this is in no particular order. Senator Mike Grady, Mike was, is here, over there. Citation, Claire, which we will be giving to you later for you to take home. State Auditor Suzanne Bump is in the audience, and Suzanne is now a constituent of Claire's because she 
lives in Easton. That's right. Have you registered to vote in oh, Easton? Yes. Okay. <laughs> we also have the mayor of the great city of Brockton, Bill Carpenter. Citation to when I told him not to bring it. <laughs> we have the clerk of courts for Plymouth County, Robert Green. Over there. We have the good fortune to be married to a board member, the former state rep, Jerry Green. Also at that table is a Brockton City Councilor, Suzanne Castro, and also a board member. Oh, his a favorite. Retired Justice, Judge Mark Lodge. And there's another judge in the house, Mark Gilday, Judge Gilday. So you're all set, people, when you're going home tonight. <laughs> Brockton City Councilor Bob Sullivan and his wife, Maria. Appointed President of Massasoit, Gina Glickman. I mean, Gina, you are somewhere over there. Congratulations. Two months in. Also, Representative Jerry Cassidy, sitting here with Claire. And Claire, he also brought a citation, <laughs> which we're not going to talk about. You can take it home. We have Sydney. Uh, Councilwoman Shirley Azak Humes. Shirley. Is also a board member. You see the theme here that we're going with. And as I said, what I think when I first started, you're you're all somebodies. But we just have to mention the other somebodies. Alright. Uh, Megan Bridges. Megan? Could you come up? <laughs> Megan. Megan is a board member, and we're always recruiting for new board members, men and women, and Megan actually took me literally. She has three new board members. Can you decide you? Three people. She's carrying three new board members. I've known tonight's honoree since she was a teenager with braces on her teeth. We actually have a picture hanging in our house of the night my husband won his seat in the House of Representatives that has Claire as a teenager with her sisters Joan and Jerry front and center. You can see a little bit of me right behind Mark. But there's Claire, right up front. And you know, she should be. She and her sisters, Joan. Is Joni here? All right, Joni. And Jerry, and Jerry and I graduated from Spelman together. They both went door, they, all three of them went door to door for Mark. They worked hard on his behalf, so I'm proud to have the picture hanging. Besides those sisters that I just mentioned, there are other family members here for Claire tonight. Um, her brother Hugh and his wife Breffy. Um, Jim and his wife Kat. Claire's husband, Ray. Hey, Ray. And her two daughters, Carrie and Kara. I remember her, Claire, after being an, after that, being an intern in the House of Representatives, and then going on to be a staff member for Governor King in 1982. She grew up in a political family, and I don't know how many of you know this, but her mother's uncle served in the Massachusetts House of Representatives in the 1920s, and her mom's brother, C. Gerald Lucy, served in the Mass House of Representatives in the 1940s, and then became mayor of Brockton. 
When Claire was first elected in 2012, she followed another Guild member who served in the Mass Legislature, Jerry Creedon. So, I mentioned I was a teacher earlier. There's a lesson in this. If you plan on running for the seat after Claire, I suggest you become a member of the Guild now. So we can see that she grew up with a strong sense of giving back to the community. I'm sure you always wonder how an organization picks someone to honor, other than being a member and a longtime supporter of the TCG. Well, I'll tell you how we picked her. We liked that she was the first woman to serve as the House Chair of the Judiciary Committee. She previously served as Vice Chair of the Joint Committee on the Judiciary, where she worked on key legislation, including family law, civil rights issues, and legislation criminalizing the trafficking of fentanyl. She has been involved in legislation benefiting veterans, including the passage of the Valor Act II and the Stolen Valor Act. She was instrumental in securing increased funding for local aid in public schools and legislation establishing an angel investor tax credit to foster investment in small businesses and startups, which was signed by the governor just last session. Congratulations. Justice Award from Equal Justice Coalition for her support of legal aid. In presenting Claire with the award, the chair of the EJC said, her work on behalf of those most in need of legal services was and is exemplary. And now that she is about to assume the weighty responsibilities of House Chairman of the Joint Committee on the Judiciary, she has the two mo most important virtues we as citizens could hope for in that position, fairness and compassion. In 2016, Claire earned the Mass Association of Trial Attorneys Legislative Leadership Award from the Mass Academy of Trial Attorneys. Her other committees include the Joint Committee on Telecommunications, Utilities and Energy, the House Committee on Post Audit and Oversight, the Joint Committee on Economic Development and Emerging Technology, and the Joint Committee on Veterans and Federal Affairs. And you should read her bio in the program. After all, we went to all that trouble. And it's all very good reading. But you know why we picked her? One of my board members, Megan, who I asked to come up here early, put it best when she said, I really nominated her because she is a strong, successful woman who represents change. She is able to bring people together from both sides of the aisle and implement pragmatic solutions. She's the first woman to chair the Judiciary Committee and pass criminal justice reform. Also, she cares about her community. Being a lifelong resident of the area and business owner, she revels in Brockton instead of running from it. And the Guild couldn't have agreed more. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, Charity Guild 2018 Honor Man, Representative Claire T. Carter. this award from the Charity Guild. I respect so deeply the women who have started this organization. It's an organization that provides the most basic of human needs to those who are most vulnerable in our communities. And the work they do every day is, makes a difference in people's lives, and especially people who have such difficult lives. And so the work they do is wonderful. Uh, I am here with some of my house colleagues. 
our partners in governor, government, the auditor, Mayor Carpenter, uh, Representative Jerry Cassidy, Senator Mike Brady, he's still here, uh, Dottie Selectman, Chair of the Board of Selectmen in Easton, uh, Councillor Bob Sullivan, Councillor Shirley Azak, did I miss anyone? I Oh, Councilor Sue Nicastro. Yeah. I'm sorry. Sister Jerry. <laughs> and my sister Jerry. I didn't want to say that because she will get a much bigger round of applause. <laughs> but at this time, I do want to say one thing, and that is when we are at our best. We stand on the shoulders of those who came before us. So I do want to give a special shout out to my friend, Jerry Creedon, who was the former rep before me. She, she paved the way for so many women. Uh, at this point in time, there have been over 20,000 men who have served in the House of representatives and under 200 have been women. Right now we only have 24, but Jerry was truly a trailblazer and I, I just want to acknowledge that. And thank you all for supporting this. Thank you. Thank you, Claire. Yeah, you're good to go. Go. Ahead. <laughs>